This video will demonstrate the joint airdrop inspection sequence for the Type 5 platform before loading inspection. This demonstration is for reference only. The following publications references the rigging procedures and inspection criteria for this airdrop load. During the inspection of an airdrop load, the load data tag will be inspected first. The load data tag will be inspected for total rigged weight, height, and dimensions to ensure the airdrop load meets parachute and aircraft restrictions. After inspecting load data tag remove the parachute log record book to ensure all information is accurate and matches data tag on parachute. Next, inspect the extraction parachute. Check the parachute log record for date within 365 days and data tag on the extraction parachute match. Ensure the pendulum line and safety loop are attached. Inspect the parachute bag closing ties which is one turn single, type 1, quarter inch cotton webbing for a 22 foot extraction parachute. Ensure that all bag closing ties pass through both bag closing loops and around the adapter web and through the grommet on one side. Move to the extraction line bag, check to ensure the correct two point link and two point link size is being used. Next check the data tag for length, loop, date stowed and who stowed the line. Ensure transportation tie is present and secured with quarter inch cotton webbing which will be removed aboard the aircraft. Ensure one foot of extraction line is extended from top center portion of the bag and five feet is extended from laced end of bag. Ensure the top and bottom closing loops on left and right side are tied with a piece of quarter inch cotton webbing and secured with surgeon's knot locking knot. Ensure the bag is laced closed forming half hitches and that the lace panel is closed with the top edge overlapping the bottom edge. Ensure the running end of bag lacing tie is secured to last lacing loop with three alternating half hitches and overhand knot, in running end. Ensure the piles are split and wrapped with cotton muslin, and tied on both ends with two turns single, quarter inch cotton webbing. Move to the front left of platform and locate the EFTC, inspect that the actuator brackets are installed correctly with bolts outboard to inboard, and pit pins are inboard to outboard and the stamped arrow on the actuator bracket faces to the front of platform. Ensure that if the actuator arm falls directly over the rail bolt, a round head bolt is used. Check that safety pin is present, outboard to inboard and cable is tightly secured to actuator. Open actuator and ensure the right size cable is being used, and that the cotter pins are present and secured. Remove actuator from bracket and set on platform. Walk to rear of platform while inspecting the cable is secured in three locations on platform. Inspect cable housing for kinks and damage. Next inspect for proper dot and arrow alignment, 1 16th inch before loading and 1 8th inch after loading. Next check to ensure platform extraction bracket is secured to platform with four bolts from bottom to top, and all nuts are flush or better. Pull on the three-point coupling link assembly to ensure it is secure and rotates freely. Lift up on the three-point coupling link assembly, to check that cotter pin is present on idler link. Then ensure platform extraction bracket lug has required one quarter inch raised edge at the base of lug. Check that the deployment line is secured to the three-point link and it is S folded and tied in two places. Ensure the deployment line is secured to the bolt on the large clevis, and that the bridles are not twisted and the bridle loops are secured to large clustering clevis. Next, check that the clustering clevis is secured to the restraint strap loop with a length of double, type 1, quarter inch cotton webbing. Trace the release strap up to the friction adapter and ensure it is properly routed. The excess of the release strap will be rolled, or S folded, and secured with type 1, quarter inch cotton webbing. Continue to trace release strap to knife, look to ensure knurled nut of knife faces up. Check to ensure the safety tie is routed through the safety tie hole, under the restraint strap, behind the bar on the knife and secured with surgeon's knot locking knot, of type 1, quarter inch cotton webbing. Next check that the riser extensions are correct size and are secured to the riser extension securing line with double, type 1, quarter inch cotton webbing. Ensure that the restraint strap alternates through the carrying handles and is secured to the tie-down clevises, 8, and 8A with trucker's hitches. 
inspect that one foot of riser extensions is connected to large clevis and the clevis bolts are tight. The cover should be girth hitched with single length of type 1 quarter inch cotton webbing on single grommet cover, the running ends should be between the clevis and through both remaining grommets and secured with surgeon's knot locking knot. Ensure the clevis is facing up towards top of parachute and is secured to left carrying handle with double quarter inch cotton webbing. Trace the 3 foot end of the riser extensions to the parachute release connectors, while checking that they are secured together with single length of type 1 quarter inch cotton webbing. Check that the riser extensions are properly secured to the parachute release connectors, and the spacers are present. Trace the riser extensions back down the opposite side from the parachute connectors to the clevis and inspect in the same manner as before. Ensure clustering handles are tied with length of type 3 nylon cord with knot and running ends. Next remove parachute log record from stowage pocket. Remove the four safety cotter pins and four tags from the parachute log record to ensure the parachute is packed within 730 days. Match the data from the parachute log record with data tags on the parachutes. Next ensure all four tags have the safety cotter pins with the tags, and the tags have line cutter, lot number, serial number, pack date and senior packer signature. Place the tags back in the parachute log record and put back in stowage pocket. Inspect to ensure parachute release connectors are seated in the upper suspension link. Check the data tag for tested date, how many seconds, and who tested it. Next inspect to ensure the nuts are flush or better. Check the safety tie on the arming wire lanyard and ensure it is a length of doubled, type 1 quarter inch cotton webbing and secured to upper suspension link. Look through the guide block winder access hole to ensure a half inch of arming wire is seen. Also ensure a length of quarter inch cotton webbing is girth hitched just below the metal fastener of the arming wire and secured with surgeon's knot locking knot. Trace the arming wire lanyard and ensure it is free and clear, and secured with three alternating half hitches and knot in running end. Ensure the drag line is secured to the right side of the right lower suspension link, and the other end is secured to the body of the right parachute release connector, with three alternating half hitches not in running ends. Check to ensure suspension slings are properly attached to lower suspension links and spacers are present. Pull on delayed release timer to ensure its keys are locked in place. Inspect the upper M1 release restraint and, ensure it runs through the parachute release connectors and secured to convenient points on the load. Next inspect the lower M1 release restraint in the same manner ensuring it wraps around the lower bolt spacer on the M1 release. Next trace the front suspension slings from the tandem link, to the upper, lower suspension link, ensuring there are no twist. Inspect the rear suspension slings in the same manner to the bottom, lower suspension links, ensuring there is a half twist towards the rear of the load. All excessive suspension slings will be as folded and secured with a single length of type 1 quarter inch cotton webbing. Trace and ensure dead man's tie is free and clear of load. Starting from right front tandem link, check that the large clevis is secured, and nuts are tight. Trace suspension sling up to dead man's tie, while checking that there are no twist. Inspect that the slings are properly padded, and ensure the safety tie is of type 3 nylon cord and secured to side board with surgeon's knot locking knot, knot and running end. Walk around the entire load and inspect all suspension slings in the same manner. Inspect the accompanying load by ensuring all Dacron lashings are tight, properly routed, and secured. All excess of the Dacron lashings will be secured to the load binder encompassing the handle, around the gooseneck portion and secured with a single length of type 1, quarter inch cotton webbing with surgeon's knot locking knot. All other excess will be secured to itself on the opposite side of the Dacron lashing with a single length of type 1, quarter inch cotton webbing with surgeon's knot locking knot. Beginning at the front right side of platform, start inspecting the Dacron lashings. As you move around the load from front right to front left, inspect that the lashings are taut and attached to the load and the tie down clevises on platform. Ensure excess is secured to the handle's gooseneck portion of the load binder, tied with a single length of type 1, quarter inch cotton webbing. Inspect that they are routed properly according to the load's specific technical manual. Inspect that the Dacron lashings and load binders are serviceable and they are properly routed through, and around the spacer portion, of the tie-down clevis. If the load binder must attach to the tie-down clevis it will be secured to the bell portion, of the tie-down clevis. As you continue to move around the load inspecting the Dacron lashings simultaneously inspect the honeycomb stacks for serviceability and position as well. Once you reach the front left side of platform inspect to ensure the center of balance is clearly marked on the load. 
last, inspect the aft restraints to ensure they are present, and the right type and quantity are being used as outlined in TM4-48.02. This concludes the video for the joint airdrop inspection sequence for the Type 5 platform before loading.